Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today we'll be diving into the dual action thriller movies titled Extraction 1 and 2. Enjoy the recap. Our story opens with Tyler Rake, an ex-Special Forces soldier on a mission in Bangladesh. He's in a firefight with some local thugs and is sporting wounds all over his body. His injury is so bad, he struggles to walk, having been shot in the leg. Then we flash back a bit. The setting, a high school in India, where a young man named Ovi Mahajan is just finishing up his day. He leaves school in a flashy car with his pals. Instead of heading straight home, Ovi chooses to hang out a bit with his friends. This doesn't sit well with Saju, his protector and head of security, who scolds him. You see, Ovi's the son of a big-time Indian drug dealer, so his safety is always on top of Saju's to-do list. Despite living in luxury, Ovi's happiness is tempered because his dad restricts his time with friends. One evening, Ovi decides to sneak out and join his buddies at a local club. In the middle of their fun, they sneak off to the garage for a smoke. Out of nowhere, a group of dirty cops show up, shoot Ovi's friend dead, and kidnap Ovi. The following day, Saju pays a visit to Ovi's father, who's doing time in a Mumbai prison. He breaks the news of Ovi's kidnapping to his boss, who's livid with Saju for failing to protect his son. Rather than losing face by paying a ransom, Ovi's dad commands Saju to get Ovi back, threatening Saju's son if he refuses. The tricky part is, with Ovi's father in jail, all his assets are locked down. They lack the cash to pay the ransom or hire an extraction team. But Ovi's dad isn't interested in excuses. He's set on Saju rescuing his son, and he wants it done now. Saju confides in his wife about the predicament. He mentions the possibility of hiring a professional for Ovi's rescue, despite the steep cost. With their limited resources, Saju concocts a plan that would help him save Ovi without breaking the bank. We then find ourselves in Australia. Tyler's taking it easy with his pals. In a burst of spontaneity he leaps off a cliff and plunges into a lake. He doesn't surface immediately. Instead, he lingers at the bottom of the lake holding his breath, lost in memories. Upon returning home, Tyler finds a helicopter and a striking woman named Nick Khan waiting for him. Nick, Tyler's handler and teammate, shares news of a new mission, the rescue of an Indian drug dealer's son, Ovi Mahajan, who was recently abducted. The kidnapper is a notorious Bangladeshi crime lord named Amir Asif, a rival of Ovi's father. Ovi is reportedly being held captive in Dhaka, Bangladesh. The mention of Dhaka reminds Tyler of his former comrade, Gaspar, who lives in the city. Nick informs him that Gaspar has since retired. After Nick departs, Tyler gears up for his mission. Simultaneously Saju is also preparing to journey to Dhaka. Once in the city, Tyler and Nick hold a strategic session with their team, planning their approach to rescuing Ovi and forecasting the movements of Amir Asif's men. Mid-mission, Tyler gets a call from one of Amir's goons, and he's swiftly escorted elsewhere. Tyler is asked by Ovi's abductors to produce the ransom, but Tyler insists on first seeing that Ovi is alive and unharmed. Once Ovi is shown to be safe, the kidnappers push Tyler to hand over the money. At the same moment, one of Tyler's associates, a sharpshooter, takes out a few of Ovi's captors. Tyler's quick thinking allows him to eliminate the remaining kidnapper. After the coast is clear, he heads back to the room where Ovi is being held hostage. Standing outside the door, he knocks to get the attention of the captors inside. As one of the kidnappers approaches the door, Tyler takes a gamble and shoots him through the door, instantly killing him. This sets off a gunfight with the remaining kidnappers inside the room. The gunfire does not go unnoticed, and additional goons outside the building quickly prepare to provide backup. But they're stopped in their tracks as Tyler's comrade, a sharpshooter positioned on a nearby rooftop, takes them out one by one with precision shots. Caught in the chaos of the firefight, Tyler finds himself without a weapon. But this doesn't stop him. With nimble reflexes, he ducks and weaves around the incoming machete strikes, and even sends one of his attackers crashing through a wall with a powerful blow. Suddenly another kidnapper enters the room, gun drawn. But Tyler is ready. He narrowly dodges a bullet and counters with a swift attack. With his gun gone, he grabs the next best weapon available, a rake, and uses it with deadly efficiency against the remaining goons. Just as he thinks the room is cleared, a young boy, presumably another of Amir Asif's stolen children, steps in, trembling with fear but holding Tyler at gunpoint. Tyler slowly approaches the terrified boy, gently takes the gun from his hand, and signals for him to leave. It's a tense moment that underscores the tragedy of child soldiers and Tyler's unwillingness to harm children. Finally, with the room secured, Tyler approaches Ovi, unties him, and they both start making plans for a hasty escape, fully aware that there are likely more kidnappers and goons lurking around. In another part of town we see Amir Esif confronting a group of young boys he believes have stolen from him. One boy is hurled from a rooftop, though he's not confirmed guilty. Another, Farhad, is ordered to cut off two of his fingers as punishment for theft. Amidst this, Colonel Rashid, the local police chief, arrives to tell Amir that Ovi has escaped. 
On hearing this, Emir commands Rashid to lock down Dhaka, securing all bridges and exit routes. Meanwhile, Tyler, with Ovi in tow, is headed for their pickup location. They pause for a moment as Tyler changes clothes and readies his weapons, while his team prepares to retrieve him and Ovi. Concurrently, Nick and her crew reach out to Ovi's father's men to arrange immediate payment, as they're about to safely return Ovi to India. They demand the money be transferred within seven minutes. Elsewhere, as Tyler's crew is en route to retrieve him and Ovi, they're suddenly ambushed. Several of Tyler's crew members fall in the sudden ambush, including their sniper. Meanwhile, Nick and her team come to the shocking realization that they've been duped. Ovi's father's men failed to transfer the funds. It appears Saju was behind the assault on Tyler's team. Saju was left with no choice due to their lack of funds to pay Tyler and his comrades. He sets out to eliminate them, with the plan to rescue Ovi himself. In an instant, Tyler pulls a grenade and lobs it in the direction of Saju to create a diversion. The grenade explodes, causing Saju to dive for cover and giving Tyler and Ovi the window they need to make their escape. They rush back to their car park nearby, Tyler shoving Ovi into the car before flooring the gas pedal. Behind them, Saju recovers and begins to open fire on their vehicle, prompting a high-speed chase through the streets. Simultaneously, Colonel Rashid learns of Tyler and Ovi's location and dispatches his own men to apprehend them. With both Saju and Rashid's forces on their tail, the stakes couldn't be higher. As they speed away, Ovi tries to convince Tyler to let him go, explaining that Saju works for his father. But there's no time to process this revelation, they're in survival mode, and they need to keep moving. Nick continues to feed Tyler vital directions over their communication line, trying to guide them to safety. Saju, undeterred, continues the pursuit, remaining hot on Tyler and Ovi's trail. The chase continues until they are blocked by other cars, forcing Tyler to abruptly reverse and ram into Saju's police car. With their vehicle no longer an option, Tyler and Ovi make a run for it, dashing into a nearby building as police officers give chase. The pair find themselves caught between Saju and Colonel Rashid's forces, leading to a tense and chaotic firefight as they scramble through the building. With no other choice, they make their way to the roof, leaping from one building to another in a desperate bid to escape. But their moment of rest is short-lived when Saju unexpectedly appears, leading to a brutal hand-to-hand -hand showdown between him and Tyler. The fight carries them off the roof, causing them to crash onto the street below, battered and wounded. A furious melee breaks out on the street, but the chaotic situation suddenly turns in Saju's favor when a car crashes into Tyler, giving Saju the chance he needs to escape. He wastes no time, immediately fleeing the scene in search of Ovi. He arrives just in time to stop Rashid's henchman from abducting the boy, proving that he's just as committed to Ovi's safety as Tyler. But Tyler, ever resilient, rams into Saju with a truck, then ushers Ovi into the vehicle and speeds away. When they reach a more secluded road, Tyler instructs Ovi to jump out while he intentionally crashes the truck, setting it on fire to erase any tracks. Saju, still alive, loses sight of them, while Amir, frustrated that Ovi is still missing, orders Colonel Rashid to deploy all his forces to apprehend Ovi and eliminate Tyler. In the midst of their escape, Tyler reaches out to Nick and updates her on their predicament. She reveals that Saju, like Tyler, is an ex-Special Forces soldier. Nick then arranges for a helicopter extraction outside the city, advising Tyler to abandon Ovi since their contract is now void. Tyler, however, cannot bring himself to abandon Ovi. He's plagued by memories of his own son whom he deserted, unable to bear the sight of his child battling lymphoma. Meanwhile, Saju, severely wounded, contacts his wife. He alerts her about his condition and instructs her to take their son and leave if he fails to rescue Ovi. Returning to Tyler, he's given the extraction point location a bridge where the helicopter is to pick them up. Having evaded Saju and the corrupt police forces on Asif's payroll, as Tyler and Ovi prepare to leave the scene, their path is blocked by a group of street kids led by Farhad, a young criminal desperate to prove his worth to Asif. Despite their age and numbers, the group poses a significant threat, showing no hesitation to engage in a conflict with Tyler. Reacting quickly, Tyler manages to disarm two of the kids who approach on a bike before tossing a smoke grenade into the group. Under the concealing veil of the smoke, Tyler moves swiftly and ruthlessly, neutralizing the threat posed by the group. However, in the midst of the chaos, a boy attempts to fire a gun at Tyler. With quick reflexes, Tyler redirects the firearm, causing it to discharge and wound Farhad's hand instead. Suddenly, the wail of police sirens surrounds the area. Realizing they're about to be cornered, Tyler grabs Ovi and makes a hasty escape into the nearby sewer system. From there, Tyler contacts Nick, requesting her to get in touch with his old comrade, Gaspar, who's currently retired and living in Dhaka. Gaspar, upon receiving the message, wastes no time. He quickly reaches Tyler and Ovi's location, providing them safe passage back to his home. 
For now, Gasper's house is their sanctuary, the place where Tyler and Ovi can rest and lay low while they strategize their next move. During the evening, while Gaspar is away, Tyler and Ovi share a conversation. Tyler discloses he once had a son who succumbed to lymphoma, expressing his regret for neglecting him when he most needed a father. He's determined not to make the same mistake with Ovi. Ovi, taking in Tyler's story, responds with a profound thought people don't drown by falling in the water, but by choosing to stay submerged. On Gaspar's return, Tyler senses something isn't right. He soon uncovers that Gaspar is in cahoots with Amir Asif. Gaspar discloses that a bounty of $10 million has been placed on Ovi, offering to split the bounty if Tyler allows him to kill Ovi. Unsurprisingly, Tyler outright rejects the offer, leading to a violent fight between the two. Just when it seems like Tyler is on the brink of defeat and Gaspar is about to deliver the final blow, Ovi emerges and shoots Gaspar. In the aftermath of his death, a stunned silence fills the room. Ovi, shaken by the reality of having taken a life, collapses into tears. He staggers towards Tyler, crying out a desperate wish to return home. Overwhelmed, he clings to Tyler, his sobs echoing in the quiet room, a stark reminder of the harsh reality they face. Deciding to collaborate, Tyler contacts Saju. They plan to work together to safely transport Ovi out of Dhaka City. The plan involves Tyler causing a distraction to draw attention away from Saju and Ovi, disguised and crossing a bridge checkpoint. Once they pass, Tyler will provide cover. The next day, Tyler starts firing at Colonel Rashid's men, causing a diversion for Saju and Ovi, who are attempting to slip away by car. Simultaneously, Nick is gearing up with her arsenal, preparing to aid Tyler in rescuing Ovi. As they reach the bridge, it becomes evident that Colonel Rashid's men have already stationed themselves there and have spotted Saju's disguise. A firefight breaks out, with Saju trying to protect Ovi while combating Colonel Rashid's troops. From a distance, Amir watches the intense skirmish on the bridge through his binoculars, ordering Colonel Rashid to deploy more troops to the bridge to obstruct the rescue. Tyler, with grim determination, sets about eliminating Colonel Rashid's troops on the street, then moves towards the bridge. Concurrently, Saju finds himself and Ovi under heavy fire on the bridge. As a police helicopter hovers above, dispatching more troops, Saju urges Tyler to reach the bridge quickly. Unfortunately, Tyler finds himself momentarily pinned down by an armored truck. Simultaneously, Nick and her team arrive at the other end of the bridge, providing much-needed cover for Saju and Ovi. Spotting the hostile helicopter, Nick takes a careful aim with an RPG and successfully brings it down. The chopper crashes spectacularly into the middle of the bridge, adding to the chaos. In the meantime, Tyler skillfully outmaneuvers his pursuers in the marketplace and manages to destroy the armored truck. He then makes his way to the bridge, cutting through Rashid's men, his eyes scanning the scene for Ovi. Despite being seriously injured by a gunshot, Saju continues to defend Ovi. He manages to neutralize the remaining soldiers on the bridge, but just as he retrieves a gun, he's shot in the head by Rashid. The colonel, armed with a sniper rifle, smirks with satisfaction as he watches Saju fall. He then shifts his aim to the evac chopper, shooting the co-pilot and forcing it to retreat. Meanwhile, Nick acquires a rifle and starts looking for the sniper who shot the chopper. Spotting Rashid, she takes careful aim and eliminates him. A mortally wounded Tyler, his thoughts filled with memories of his ex-wife and son, stumbles towards Ovi. He grips the boy's hand, instructs him to run towards the chopper, and then prepares to make his final stand. As he fires at the last of Rashid's men, taking out almost all of them, he turns back towards the chopper, but he is shot in the back of the neck by Farhad, the young boy he'd let go earlier. Tyler staggers, blood seeping from his neck. He turns towards the evac chopper, his vision blurring as he sees a tearful Nick and Ovi. He nods at them, a signal that they should leave, and then plummets off the bridge. Nick and Ovi, their hearts heavy, escape on the chopper as an enraged Amir watches on his plan thwarted. Eight months later, Ovi is back in school. In a moment that mirrors Tyler's introduction, Ovi plunges into his school's swimming pool to practice holding his breath. Elsewhere, Amir encounters Nick Khan in a restroom, leading to a deadly confrontation that ends with Nick shooting him. Tyler, beaten and bloodied, found lying on a sandy beach in Dhaka. His body bears the scars of the dangerous mission, and his blood soaks into the sand. The local folk stumble upon him, rapidly dialing for assistance. Soon, a flying ambulance tears through the skies, swooping down to transport him to a hospital in Dubai, where the doctors hastily move him into intensive care. Nick Khan, his old buddy and handler, hastens to his bedside. With worry etched on her face, she keeps a constant watch, refusing to let Tyler out of her sight. As the days blur into weeks, Tyler's condition stagnates, causing Yaz to shake his head in despair. He recommend that Nick consider the humane option, to unplug the machines and let Tyler find peace. But Nick's resolve is unshakable. She isn't prepared to say goodbye just yet. Then, miraculously, Tyler stirs. His labored breathing and hushed whispers catch a nurse's attention, who promptly alerts Nick. 
Tyler wakes up, his first rough word being F off, making Nick laugh. And so, Tyler embarks on a challenging path to recovery. Through strenuous physical therapy and demanding rehab drills, he slowly but surely regains his vitality. Nick remains a constant presence throughout, offering words of motivation and unwavering care. While Tyler's recovery journey continues across the world in Georgia, Zarab gets wind of his brother's elongated jail time. Bitterness bubbles within him. Meanwhile back in Dubai, Tyler grapples with the ghosts of his past, wrestling with guilt and remorse. In a moment of vulnerability, he confides in Nick, who listens empathetically. Touched by his raw honesty, Nick offers comforting words and reminds him of his selfless act in saving Ovi. Back in Georgia, Zarab immediately contacts the governor, demanding action be taken to help his incarcerated brother, Devitt. However, the governor explains that Devitt's reckless actions of throwing a DEA agent off a bridge have attracted American attention, making it impossible to intervene on his behalf. Enraged by this response, Zarab murders the governor and his men on the spot. Meanwhile, Tyler finds himself being discharged in the company of Nick and her brother Yaz. Yaz is wearing a shirt that Tyler laughs at, prompting a promise from Yaz to get him one. They then head to Austria, Nick drives Tyler to a secluded cabin, a retirement gift, and encourages him to start a new chapter in his life, one different from his past ventures. A few days later, Yaz delivers on his promise and sends Tyler the shirt. In prison, David gathers his family, insisting they live there with him. His wife resists this demand, causing David to strike her and threaten separation from their children if she doesn't comply. One day, as Tyler returns from a drive to his new home, he finds a stranger sipping tea on his porch. The man recognizes Tyler as the legend of Mumbai, the man who saved a journalist. He offers Tyler a new job, but Tyler dismisses him, asserting his retirement. Unconvinced, the man taunts Tyler, suggesting he's lost his ability to pull the trigger. In response, Tyler shoots the teacup from the man's hand, proving him wrong and ordering him to leave. The man adds a new detail to his proposal, stating that the job has been offered by Tyler's ex-wife, Mia. Intrigued, Tyler allows the conversation to move indoors. The man reveals that Mia's sister, also the wife of Devitt, is caught in a perilous situation in a Georgian prison due to her husband's misdeeds. He recounts the tale of Devitt and Zarab, brothers who grew up amidst the civil war in Georgia. They proudly identify themselves as the Nagazi, a title they hold in high esteem. They fled to Armenia during the civil unrest and were raised by their uncle Avtan Deal, who still oversees their operations. They returned to Georgia as a formidable force, establishing a cult-like group with their kin. They've risen to such power that they virtually control the country, with Devitt's imprisonment being merely a result of American influence. Persuaded by the man's tale, Tyler consents to the mission. He is warned against causing trouble in the prison, where two gangs would seize the opportunity to end his life. If Devitt learns his wife is to be rescued, he would not hesitate to kill her. The man leaves, promising to catch up with Tyler later. While enjoying her vacation on the stunning Amalfi Coast in Italy, Nick receives an unexpected call from Tyler. It seems that the quiet life isn't quite for him, and he has a new mission in mind. Nick agrees to lend her expertise, along with Yaz, and they gear up for another operation. Tyler throws himself into training, shedding his retirement lifestyle, removing his cast and getting his body back in fighting shape. Soon they're all on their way to Takiri Prison. Upon their arrival, a guard with responsibility for Room 207, where the target family is being held, Nick and Yaz patiently stand guard outside the prison while Tyler slips in. The guard responsible for Gate 207 flips off the lights, unlocking the gate and setting Tyler a five-minute deadline for the extraction. Navigating the dim corridors with the help of a small light, Tyler quietly makes his way to the family's cell. Ketevan is already anticipating his arrival. She stirs her children awake, assuring her son Sandro that their father would join them later. As they try to escape, a mishap occurs. Nina, the youngest, drops her toy. It emits a distinctive noise that catches Tyler's attention but his attempt to crush it underfoot is a second too late. The noise awakens Davit, who whistles sharply a signal to the other prisoners loyal to him. A riot ensues immediately. The group, now in danger, makes a run for it, with Tyler leading them through various corridors and stairways. When they find themselves trapped in a cell surrounded by hostile inmates, a violent brawl ensues. Tyler puts up a formidable fight, managing to fend off several men and regrettably shooting one to make them back off. He uses a small explosive to blast the door open, rescuing the group just in time as the prisoners surge towards them again. Despite the mayhem around them the group presses on, following Tyler into an underground corridor. Spotting a chute in the ceiling, he sends the children through it, instructing them to find Nick outside. However, before Tyler and Ketevan can follow, David appears and attacks them. Tyler engages in an intense fight with David, eventually subduing him by burning his face against a furnace, breaking his arm, and finally delivering a fatal stab. Ketevan too, exacts her revenge with a brutal hit from a shovel. 
Suddenly, a mob of prisoners swarm the end of the corridor. Tyler instructs Nick to take the kids to safety while he searches for another way out. Outside the prison, a violent confrontation between the rioting prisoners and the police unfolds. Tyler and Ketevin manage to reach the yard amid this chaos, deciding to force their way through. Initially, Tyler holds the enemies at bay with his firearm, but he eventually runs out of ammunition, leaving him to resort to hand-to-hand -hand combat. In the ensuing skirmish, Tyler sustains injuries. Ketevin tries her best to aid Tyler in the fight, using the shovel as a weapon. However, she's soon overwhelmed and gets knocked down, causing several prisoners to descend on her. Tyler fights off multiple attackers at once to protect her. When the situation becomes dire, he shields her with his own body and tosses a grenade. In the ensuing chaos, Tyler gets hit on the head, which momentarily disorients him. Seizing this opportunity, a prisoner drags Ketevin away. However, Tyler quickly regains his senses and pursues them. He fights off a few police officers and snatches their shields to shield himself from a fire that's broken out. Battling his way through the onslaught, Tyler finally catches up with Ketevin and kills the prisoner threatening her. Just in time a backdoor explodes a rescue effort by Nick and her team. Yaz informs them that they've intercepted Nagazi radio transmissions and know they're being pursued. They all pile into bulletproof vans and after blowing up the front gate speed off from the prison. Tyler instructs the children to put on bulletproof vests and duck beneath the back seats for safety. Suddenly they run into Nagazi soldiers who start shooting at them, triggering a high-speed chase. Nick and her team retaliate, causing several enemy vehicles to veer off the road. However, to be on the safe side, Tyler takes their van off-road, heading into a forest. The Nagazi continue their pursuit in cars and motorcycles, lobbing grenades at the vans to eliminate Nick's team. Despite the odds, Tyler and Nick's vans survive, managing to take down the bikers with a few daring maneuvers. An explosion soon strikes Tyler's vehicle, causing it to flip. The mercenaries provide cover fire while the family scrambles out of the damaged van, but Nina suffers a hand injury in the process. They quickly take shelter in a nearby factory, sprinting through its interior to reach a waiting train that's their ticket out of Georgia. As the train speeds away, additional Nagazi soldiers arrive in helicopters, prompting Tyler to search for extra weaponry on board the train. He quickly locates a machine gun and uses it to shoot down one of the helicopters, sending it crashing into a snowy landscape below. Tyler then ascends to the train's roof to counterattack the second helicopter. However, the enemy returns fire, forcing Tyler to take cover. Seizing this opportunity, several Nagazi soldiers jump onto the train. Nick confronts three of these soldiers and engages them in a fierce battle, mixing gunfire with hand-to-hand -hand combat. She successfully eliminates all three and hurls another off the moving train, but she sustains injuries in the process. Simultaneously, another group of Nagazi soldiers targets the family. Tyler intercepts them, initiating another intense fight. A soldier nearly forces Tyler off the train, but with great strength and resolve, Tyler pushes back. Sandra watches in shock as Tyler systematically eliminates each attacker. After neutralizing the threat, Tyler rushes to check on Nick. Although injured, she's alive. Just then, the helicopter resumes its assault. Tyler retrieves a machine gun from a fallen enemy and returns to the train roof to take down the helicopter, causing it to explode upon crashing into the snowy terrain. Regrettably, Nick discovers that the enemy's gunfire has damaged the train's brakes. In a state of urgency, Tyler hurries back to the family, advising them to brace themselves as the brakeless train veers off the tracks and crashes. Concurrently, Zarab and Avtandil receive news of David's demise. As they make their way towards their escape plane, Devitt's son Sandro confronts Tyler, realizing that he's the one who killed his father. Tyler explains that it was a matter of life and death, it was either Sandro's mother or his father. Still, the boy harbors anger towards Tyler. Once on the plane heading for Vienna, Sandro overhears Yaz mentioning their destination over the phone. Seizing an opportunity, Sandro steals the phone, reaching out to his uncle, Zarab. He questions Zarab about his father's intention to kill his mother. This revelation makes Zarab realize that Devitt's wife was the catalyst for the whole ordeal, and he swears vengeance on everyone involved in the mission. After talking to Sandro, Zarab rallies his men, instilling in them a burning desire to avenge their brother. Meanwhile they touch down in Vienna, Austria, arriving at a safe house. Nick has a deep conversation with Ketevin, who happens to be Tyler's sister-in-law. Sandro then confronts Tyler again, expressing his anger for his father's death. Tyler calmly responds, stating he held no personal grudge against his father, he did what was necessary. Believing they've reached a safe location, Tyler, Nick and the others remain unaware of Zarab's impending assault. In the midst of Tyler's efforts to bond with Sandro, the boy suddenly alerts them of an impending attack. Before they can react a helicopter emerges in the sky, accompanied by numerous Nagazi soldiers in cars. Tyler swiftly alerts everyone to evacuate, just as Ketevin discovers Sandro secretly texting Zarab to arrange a meeting. Sandro asserts that the Nagazi are his family, 
but before they can further argue, the helicopter unleashes a barrage of gunfire on their room, shattering every window. Tyler promptly shields the family from harm and waits for the helicopter to leave before leading them to the elevator. Meanwhile, as the helicopter deploys soldiers onto the roof, various police cars arrive. However, the soldiers in the streets swiftly neutralize the police officers to prevent their interference. Tyler's group makes it to the garage, but as they board the van, Sandro seizes the opportunity to escape. Yaz chases after him, while the rest of the group departs in the van, only to be blocked by the Nagazi who open fire, forcing them to retreat. On the streets, Sandro encounters Zarab, who fires at Yaz, compelling him to take cover. Both men try to persuade Sandro to side with them, but their conversation is interrupted when Nick arrives in another vehicle. The Nagazi respond by launching a rocket at her vehicle. Amidst the ensuing chaos, Zarab seizes Sandro and ushers him into his car. Yaz helps Nick out of the damaged van, and they exchange gunfire with the Nagazi. After tossing a grenade, they retreat back into the safety of the building. Meanwhile in the garage, Kedavan and Nina stay hidden in the van as Tyler takes on the soldiers. He successfully neutralizes many and combats the last one hand to hand, ultimately defeating him using a grenade. Nick and Yaz engage a few soldiers outside before retreating to the roof via the elevator. Simultaneously, Tyler makes his escape with Kedavan and Nina in a van. However, they don't get far before being overwhelmed by enemy fire. Left with no other option, Tyler halts the vehicle and joins the firefight, successfully taking down numerous soldiers. Just as a police helicopter arrives to offer support, a Nagazi rocket launcher blasts it out of the sky. Tyler eliminates a few more enemy combatants before creating a safe passage. He then escorts the family back to the hotel on foot, reaching the elevator mere moments before Zarab launches another assault. In a clandestine vehicle, Sandro is anxious about his mother. Aftan Deal, in response, coldly asserts that he should not have called if he wanted her to live. On the hotel rooftop, Nick and Yaz attempt to reach the extraction helicopter provided by their allies, only to discover it swarmed by Nagazi soldiers. A gunfight breaks out, and Nick instructs Yaz to assist Tyler as she covers him from the rooftop. Yaz heads to a lower floor where Tyler is in a fierce battle with more Nagazi soldiers. Unfortunately, he encounters more enemies along the way. He manages to neutralize them but sustains severe injuries in the process. Simultaneously, Nick is wounded on the roof and losing consciousness tumbles down onto a lower glass roof with a Nagazi soldier. The soldier quickly loses his grip and falls, leaving Nick precariously hanging on the edge. Tyler spots this and after dispatching the last soldier in his path, dives through the window and catches Nick just in time. Now however they both teeter on the edge of the glass. Zarab suddenly appears and shoots Tyler in the hand, but Tyler's grip remains unyielding. In a stroke of luck, Nick regains consciousness and fires her weapon, shattering the glass beneath Zarab, leaving him dangling as well. Tyler immediately hurls Nick through a nearby window, enabling her to find the family and eliminate the remaining Nagazi soldiers threatening them. Once reunited with Yaz, they head toward the roof. Simultaneously, Tyler and Zarab clamber back up and engage in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. Numerous blows are exchanged, and just as Tyler draws his knife to finish Zarab, the glass beneath them shatters, causing Zarab to plunge into the room below. With no time to spare, Tyler joins the group on the roof who are boarding the extraction helicopter. Zarab suddenly reappears, shooting Yaz before ducking for cover as Tyler retaliates. Everyone scrambles into the helicopter which lifts off. As they fly away, Tyler attends to Yaz's injuries, but despite his best efforts, Yaz succumbs to his injuries. A short time later, Tyler and the others find refuge in his cabin. Nick carefully cleans Yaz's body as she mourns his loss, and Tyler tends to his own injuries. Unexpectedly, someone arrives, Mia, Tyler's ex-wife. The sisters joyfully reunite, and after a period of bonding, Mia approaches Tyler for a heart-to-heart. Tyler apologizes to Mia for abandoning her when their son was ill, explaining that his actions were driven by his feeling of helplessness and inability to watch his son die. Meanwhile, Avtandil tries to reason with Zarab, highlighting the excessive loss of their soldiers over a single woman. With Sandro now in their possession, Avtandil suggests they move forward. However, Zarab betrays him, ordering a soldier to shoot Avtandil. Witnessing this, Sandro is left in shock. These Nagazi men were supposed to be his family. A few hours later, Tyler's phone rings. It's Zarab, proposing a negotiation meeting at the airfield by St. George's Church. Tyler agrees, but with the sole intention of combat. Ignoring Nick's pleas to reconsider, Tyler heavily arms himself and heads to the airport. Upon arrival, he stealthily takes down a few guards before detonating an explosive on Zarab's plane. As Zarab and Sandro scamper away, Tyler begins his advance, causing every vehicle in sight to explode and engaging any soldier that crosses his path in combat. Despite receiving a serious stomach wound, Tyler relentlessly follows them to the church. 
Upon entering the church, Tyler realizes it's a trap. Zarab has strapped several bombs to Sandro and holds the detonator, effectively preventing Tyler from shooting. Zarab coerces Sandro to take Tyler's gun and avenge his father by killing him, but Sandro freezes, paralyzed by guilt and fear. Just as Zarab is about to execute Tyler himself, Nick unexpectedly bursts in through the back door. Using Sandro as a human shield, Zarab forces Nick to surrender her weapon. Seizing the moment, Tyler signals Sandro, who swiftly snatches the detonator and releases himself from Zarab's control. Nick swiftly draws another gun and a fierce gunfight ensues with Zarab, leaving her severely injured. Tyler lunges at Zarab, tackling him to the ground. An intense melee fight ensues, with both men using any object within the church as improvised weapons. Sandro manages to remove the bombs attached to him and hands the detonator to Nick, apologizing for his earlier actions. Nick promptly disables the explosives. Meanwhile, Tyler and Zarab continue their brutal fight, both men landing harsh blows and wreaking havoc in their surroundings. After a lengthy and violent struggle, Tyler finally gets hold of a large nail and repeatedly stabs Zarab. Despite his grave injuries, Zarab continues to rant about revenge, forcing Tyler to grab a gun and shoot him in the head to finally put an end to it. In the immediate aftermath, Tyler rushes to check on Nick, but the Austrian police arrive at the scene and apprehend everyone present. A few days later, Nick and Tyler find themselves in prison. Nick is given medical attention, and her condition stabilizes. One afternoon Mia visits Tyler in prison. She explains that Ketevin and her children have been offered witness protection in exchange for information about the Nagazi. Mia also shares with Tyler that their son's last memory of him wasn't him abandoning their family, but rather his father courageously going to war to protect the world. She tells Tyler their son aspired to be as brave as him, a revelation that touches Tyler deeply. Sometime later, Tyler is led to a car under the guise of a prison transfer. However, it isn't a transfer at all. Waiting for him in the car is Alcott, who offers Tyler a way out of jail in exchange for his agreement to take on another job. Tyler hesitates, but when Alcott promises to also secure Nick's release, he agrees to the proposition. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.